Good morning, fifth grade. Today we are going to be reading about one of my favorite heroes. His name is Cesar Chavez, um, and the book is called Harvesting Hope. Um, but Miss Keegan has typed it up for you so you would be able to follow along um, with us during the whole group lesson. But before we get started, we want you to um, think really quickly in this quick write. What makes a person a hero? Describe a hero we've read about this year. So you could talk about Malala. You could talk about, um, you know, someone from a fictional novel. You could talk about a Civil War hero. Um, silently write down two to three sentences um, about what makes a hero and describe a hero we've read about this year. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for vocabulary. Our focus question today is how does Cesar Chavez respond um, to challenge? It's, it shouldn't say to challenge twice. You can cross that out. What does this reveal about him as a person? And then we have three vocabulary words. The first one is harvest, um, and that's the process of gathering crops. So these people um, are harvesting. And it's a noun and a verb, so the harvest is the time when you gather the crops, and harvesting is actually gathering the crops. Um, the second word is coax, and that's when you try to persuade someone um, using flattery or bribe. And so this little boy is trying to coax um, this animal into the barn, you know, and he has some food down here in a bowl. And then the last one is ranch, and that's a really large farm, um, usually where cattle or other animals are raised. All right, so we're going to get started reading, and um, the first time we read through it, we're going to use our CSPS strategy, um, just so we can get to know Cesar and what he's all about before we begin to answer um, some deeper questions. So I'm at Until Cesar Was Ten. Until Cesar Chavez was 10, every summer night was like a fiesta. Relatives swarmed onto a ranch for barbecues with watermelon, lemonade, and fresh corn. Cesar and his brothers, sisters, and cousins settled down to sleep outside, under netting to keep mosquitoes out. But who could sleep out with uncles and aunts singing, spinning ghost stories, and telling magical tales of life back in Mexico? Cesar thought the whole world belonged to his family. The 80 acres of their ranch were an island of sh sh in the shimmering Arizona desert, and the starry skies were all their own. Many years earlier, Cesar's grandfather had built their spacious abode house, adobe house, to last forever. With walls 18 inches thick, a vegetable garden, cows, and chickens supplied all the food they could want. With hundreds of cousins on farms nearby, there was always someone to play with. Cesar's best friend was his, was his brother Richard. They never spent a day apart. Cesar was so happy at home that he was little afraid when school started. On his first day, he grabbed a seat next to his old, older sister Rita. The teacher moved him to another seat, and Cesar flew out the door and ran home. It took three days of coaxing for him to return to school and take his place with the other first graders. Cesar was stubborn, but he was not a fighter. His mother cautioned her children against fighting, urging them to use their minds and mouths to work out conflicts. Then, okay, I'm going to stop right there. Hold this place right here. So, um, let's sit, think about what Cesar is like. In our text it says, you know, um, he lives on a ranch with everyone in his family in Arizona, um, and, you know, he seems to have, Cesar seems to have this really, like, happy, full life surrounded by his family. So you can write that down for character. Cesar Chavez, um, has, you know, when, or I guess when he was younger, when Cesar Chavez was 10, and before he was 10, he lived this happy, full life on a ranch surrounded by his family.
And then our text also says that um, he was stubborn, but he wasn't a fighter because his mom taught her children um, to work out their conflicts using words instead of violence. So you could also write that down in the second part. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for number two. And ask us for the setting. And in this first section, um, we know the setting is in Arizona. It's on a ranch in Arizona. Okay, and then we know it says then in 1937. So this is that summer Cesar was 10. Um, something else is going to happen. And so we will have um, another setting and most likely a problem. All right, press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready. We're at then. Then in 1937, the summer Cesar was 10, the trees around the ranch began to welt. The sun baked the farm soil rock hard. A drought was choking the life out of Arizona. Without water for the crops, the Chavez family couldn't make money to pay its bills. Okay, stop right there. That's a really big problem. That's a huge problem. Um, all of the plants, you know, a drought caused all of the plants to dry up, and Cesar's family couldn't pay their bills. Silently write that down for the problem. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready. There came a day when Cesar's mother couldn't stop crying. In the day, Cesar watched his father strap their possessions onto the roof of their old car. After a long struggle, the family no longer owned the ranch. They had no choice but to join the hundreds of thousands of people fleeing to the Green Valleys of California to look for work. Cesar's old life had vanished. Now he and his family were migrants, working on other people's farms, crisscrossing California, picking whatever fruits and vegetables were in season. Okay, and we can add that um, to we can add that to the problem. Cesar's family became migrant workers. Mm -hmm. They lost their ranch and became migrant workers in California. Silently write that down in the second piece for the problem. And then we know that they'll have a new setting, so we'll have to write something about California in box two. Let's keep reading um, this paragraph that starts with when to look for evidence about California. When the Chavez family arrived at first at the first of their new homes in California, they found a battered old shed. Its doors were missing, and garbage covered the dirt floor. Cold, damp air seeped into their bedding and clothes. They shared water and outdoor door toilets with dozens of other families, and overcrowding made everything filthy. The neighbors were constantly fighting, and the noise upset Cesar. He had no place to play games with Richard. Meals were sometimes made of dandelion greens gathered along the road. So in, we know in California, um, Cesar's new home was a battered old shed. And everything, um, everything was dirty, and there was a lot of fighting going on. And so we can add that to the setting. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep going. Just think about how Cesar... Um, response to this new situation in California that is really different um, from what he's used to in Arizona. Cesar swallowed his bitter homesickness and walked alongside his family. He was small and not very strong, but still a fierce worker. Nearly every crop caused torment. Yanking out beets broke the skin between his thumb and index finger. Great vines sprayed with bug-killing chemicals, made his eyes sting and his lungs wheeze. Lettuce had to be the worst. Thinning lettuce all day with a short-handled hoe would make hot spasms shoot through his back. Farm chores on someone else's farm instead of on his own felt like a form of slavery. Okay, let's keep going. Try to find a solution. 
The Chavez family talked constantly of saving enough money to back their ranch. But by each sundown, the whole family had earned as little as 30 cents for a day's work. As the years blurred together, they spoke of the ranch less and less. The towns weren't much better than the fields. White trade-only signs were displayed in many stores and restaurants. None of the 35 schools Cesar attended over the years seemed to have like a safe place either. Only after Cesar broke the rule about speaking English at all times, a teacher hung a sign on him that read, I am a clown, I speak Spanish. He came to hate school because of the conflicts, though he liked to learn. Even he considered his 8th grade education, 8th grade graduation, a miracle. After 8th grade, he dropped out to work in the fields full time. His lack of schooling embarrassed Cesar for the rest of his life, but as a teenager, he just wanted to put food on his family's table. As he worked, it disturbed him that landowners treated their workers more like farm tools than human beings. They provided no clean drinking water, rest periods, or access to bathrooms. Anyone who complained was fired, beaten up, or sometimes murdered. Wow, this is... This is sounding a lot like um, how African-American slaves were treated um, before the Civil War and maybe even after when they became sharecroppers. So this is another um, group of people, um, mostly from Mexico, who moved to California to become migrant workers um, and Cesar you know, in his own life is telling us how, you know, they were mistreated. And this line is very important. They provided no clean drinking water, rest periods, or access to bathrooms. And if you complained, you were beaten up in fire. Okay, so let's keep going. So like other migrant workers, Cesar was afraid and suspicious whenever outsiders showed up to try to help. How could they know about feeling so powerless? Who could battle such odds? Yet, Cesar had never forgotten his old life in Arizona and the jolt he felt when it was turned upside down. Farm work did not have to be this miserable. Okay, and so let's stop right there. We're thinking about how did Cesar try to solve his problem? Well, um, we know that up at the top of the second page, it talks about how his family tried to save enough money to buy back their ranch, but they were not successful because um, their bosses wouldn't pay them enough. And then we could also write down, you know, that Cesar is starting to think that um, that a change can be made. You know, farm work doesn't have to be this miserable. And then it says, reluctantly, he started paying attention to outsiders. He began to think that maybe there was a hope, and in his early 20s, he decided to dedicate the rest of his life to fighting for a change. Underline that sentence. That, that sentence really brings together our solution. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. How does Cesar respond to challenge? Again, cross out the second to challenge. What does this reveal about him as a person? 